Bend the knee! <sighs> Where to begin? Season 5 of Game of Thrones, Episode 9. The Dance of the Dragons. So, you know, I went into this one hoping that it would top the level of excellence that we got with Hard Home. And I must say I was thoroughly disappointed. So, you know, let's let's start off with the elephant in the room. You know, um, earlier in the season, we get a very touching, very gripping scene with Stannis telling Shireen how he did everything in his power to save her from grayscale, right? Uh, when people were saying you should send her to live in the ruins of Valeria with the stone men, and he was like, no, she's my daughter, and never, whatever, right? A couple episodes ago, we get Melisandre saying, hey, well, yeah, you can get to Winterfell, uh, but you're gonna have to make a sacrifice and Stannis is like, oh, no, you crazy if you lost your mind. And while I get it to a certain extent what Stannis did, because look, I, I'm, I'm not gonna say that this was an easy thing for him to do. But me, Stan, I wasn't a Stannis fan when he was first introduced to the show. Um, I thought him burning people because they didn't agree with Melisandre's religion, because remember, he didn't start off even believing in what she believed in. I thought that him, you know, burning those people was, um, was a dick move, you know? Um, it's like, oh, this, this woman that you have no idea what she's all about, she says that she can see things in fire tells you to burn people in order to appease her God and you do it and she wanted you to kill your nephew whether he's a bastard or not he's still your blood uh, and then she comes to you later on and says well yeah kill your daughter and you know, he sends Davos away because he knows Davos is going to be the guy to talk some fucking sense into him, right? And tell him, look, dude, no, you, not this, you know, because let's think about it, right? When it comes to Stannis, when people find out what he's done, who's going to follow him? You know, forget about his army because the army is already brainwashed, right? I'm talking about the common people because they're going to find out what he did. And when they do, who's going to follow him as a king? Because now he's a kinslayer. And also, you know, him with the whole thing of... What do you think Melisandre is going to gonna go to King's Landing? And be like, oh yeah, we're just going to leave the Sept of Baelor here? No, they're going to try to burn the whole damn thing down to make way for a lord. So, you know, not only did I have a problem with the fact that Stannis killed his daughter and he, he ordered her execution but I think also you know um Solis Solis was a big problem for me because she's actually been pushing for this to happen for a very long time but then like literally you know the last second she's like oh no I you know we can't go through with this so I mean like if it had been a thing where Solis was kind of questioning whether or not she felt that this was right. I might have been able to get over that, right? It might not have sat so it, I had such a bitter taste, you know, but that just piled on to the fact that she, you know, to, to the fact that Stannis killed Shireen, you know, basically under orders from Melisandre. So basically, Stannis isn't the fucking king. Melisandre is more the fucking king than Stannis is. Uh, 
So, yeah, man, yeah, I'm just, uh... Yeah, you know what, en enough about, uh, fuckboy status. Um, the Arya stuff, you know, the only thing I was thinking to myself was, damn it, you're here for a mission, you know, I'm pretty sure by now they've told her what the rules are to becoming a faceless man. You gotta kind of give up your past. And I don't give up your past. I mean, it's like, if you got vengeance for somebody, you know, you're gonna have to give that up. That's not your, your job. Your job is to do the will of the many-faced God, right? And so, if you're doing the job of the will of the many-faced God, you know, you can't be concerned with Mirren Trent um, like, I get it, I understand, you know, she, um, her not burying Needle or, or, um, or not throwing Needle in the, in the canal, um, was symbolic of her not fully giving up being Arya Stark. But, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be some price that she's gonna have to pay for this, because, yeah, you can't just go... Look, they, they gave you a mission, and you went and basically said, oh, well, I got distracted, so, you know, fuck that mission kind of thing. And, um, you know, the way that it kind of, like, the tension build up when she went to the brothel, it almost looked like she was going to get raped by Mira Tran and, and the Lannister soldiers, um, especially when the one walked up and grabbed the oyster or whatever. But, um... You know, we'll see what happens with that. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't a bad uh, set of events, but I wasn't blown away by it, right? Uh, let's see what else we got. We got John getting back to the wall, and it looked at first as though Alistair Thorne wasn't going to let him in. But, you know, it was like, uh, it kind of looks like Alistair Thorne is actually on his side to a certain extent. But um, most of the men of the Night's Watch are not, you know, and especially his steward, Ollie, and it seems like no matter what you explain to these guys, they're just like, oh, we, we don't give a fuck that there's an undead army marching for the wall, and, you know, we're supposed to be the last line of defense, or no, the first line of defense against them. Oh, no, no, that doesn't matter. You you brought people we don't like here. And, yeah, you know, that, that kind of relates to the real world, too, because... Let's put. Let's be honest. You know, I'm I'm here in America, and there are people here who are very xenophobic. You know, and if there was some kind of invading horde coming from South America, and you know, we we had to ferry some people from south of our borders, whether it's Central America, Mexico, or you know, other parts of South America. I'm pretty sure there would still be people who would be like, oh, well, yeah, fuck whether or not they're going to turn into zombies. We just don't want them here because they're not Americans or, or, or whatever. So, you know, I, I, I get it, you know, but it still doesn't make them any less uh, fucking idiots. Um, so we'll see what happens next episode with that one. Uh, we didn't get anything from King's Landing this time. Um... We didn't actually get anything from Winterfell, but, you know, the only kind of clues that we got is when uh, Ramsey uh, burned down the food supplies and all that. And, you know, back to Stan as being a dick, you know, he says, oh, well, either the guards were asleep or they, um, or they were collaborating with the enemy. How do you know the guards aren't fucking dead? You know, you... <laughs> But, uh, whatever, whatever with that. Um, you know, and then finally we get the scene uh, with Daenerys opening the fighting pits. Uh, Jorah, uh, you know, wins kind of a little bit of his glory back. Uh, we get, you know, some banter back and forth between Dario and his daughter Zalorak. And everything will lead you, you know, up until this point, everything will lead you to believe that his star was either the Harpy himself or he was collaborating with the, the Harpies, the Sons of the Harpies, whatever. 
And I guess we got our confirmation that he actually was not a part of that plot because they stabbed him in the chest as long, you know, as well um, as a bunch of the masters and slaves. Now, um, the thing with the masters, I think that the, the harpies actually want to killing some of the other masters mainly because um as far as the harpies i think the you know i think they wanted up killing the masters and um slaves mainly because you know like they were collaborating with Danny in her new world, right? Her new world view of things. And it's like, yeah, you brought back the fighting pits, but you've already uh, gotten rid of slavery, and we wanted slavery. And so any master who was willing to, to settle to not have that, we're not even trying to deal with you. So, you know, we get Drogon. Danny flying away on Drogon, and for some reason, I, I could have sworn Drogon looked bigger. Or I thought he would be bigger. Um, I was waiting to hear her say Jakardis, uh, but she didn't. Because um, there was uh, there was a point where um, there was a point where you know. Uh, Drogon, I kind of stopped fighting for a second. I'm just like, uh, dude, you know, you, you might want to start spitting some flames right about now, you know. Um, yeah, but. Oh, man, um. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this one short. I, I actually was very, uh, kind of disappointed by this episode. Um, oh, you know what? It's. I almost forgot about Dorne, and see, that's that's how kind of inconsequential Dorne has been this season. Uh, like, yeah, this this is you know probably one of the better uh, episodes that uh, that Dorne appears in, but um, we didn't get much from it. You know, they they let Jamie go back with Tristan and Marcella and Bron, and we don't know what the hell is going to happen with the Sand Snakes and. Um, this chick, whatever, we did see that, you know, listen, you know, Doran is not to be fooled with when it comes to, um, dealing with people at home, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot more to it, or whatever, um, but, you know, we'll see what happens with that, but, um, oh yeah, uh, you know, and as much as I want to hate Dan and Dave for the whole... Uh, Stannis burning Shireen thing apparently from like when I was looking at the inside the episode the inside the episode thing um, apparently that's not something they came up with on their own that's something that they actually got from George himself so um, whether or not it was the same reasoning or whatever um you know, or happen in the same fashion, I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, that was not something that Dan and Dave came up with on their, uh, on their own, but, um, that doesn't make it any less, uh, of a disappointment, you know, um, last week I gave Hard Home a 10 out of 10, and this might seem like I'm just... Uh, being a little bit too um, overly critical about this particular episode, but I'm going six out of ten with this one. So, uh, if you want to hear me talk more about this, uh, I would suggest you know uh, hitting up the video that I'm gonna leave in the description. It's a uh, discussion with me, Don the Crack and Wit. Uh, Lady Zohart and Sir L.T. Giles and um, yeah you can hear more of my views and some of their views on that one as well <sighs> yeah anyway uh, hopefully next week will be better um, 
Because this was some bullshit. Anyway, that's been my time. Don Willie, I'm out. Yeah.